Good afternoon, family. We are at the largest gathering of black folks in the world. Good afternoon, family. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon for the I Am New Orleans panel on voting rights and the power of our votes. Uh, just a little bit about I Am New Orleans. I Am New Orleans is a campaign focused on the salient issues impacting the New Orleans community and looking at those issues through an equity lens. Um, so I'm excited to be joined by a powerhouse of black women leaders in this state. Um, leaders who often, like many of us, put our heads down and do the heavy lifting. We don't do the work because of the lights or the shine. We do the work for the change. Uh, and I'm just so excited to be joined by these women. So let's get into it. Uh, sitting immediately next to me is Ashley Shelton, Executive Director of the Power Coalition for Equity and Justice. Please give it up for Ashley. And immediately next to her is Judy Reese Morse, president and CEO of the Urban League of Louisiana. Please give it up for Judy. So today, I just wanna put this conversation in context. We were at the start of the week, like all of us, super excited to hear news um, from the Supreme Court that, we, um, that affirmed the decision that Alabama and then thus Louisiana should have a second majority minority congressional district. So we were excited about that and, and uh, Ashley was screening calls and talking to the AP and it's a win quite candidly, we hadn't expected but that the people worked for. And then yesterday and Friday happened. And if you are like me, you felt in your body the impact of the reversal of affirmative action. But all is not lost. And I think today's discussion uh, really highlights the power and the importance of people power as we deal with political perilous times. Uh, we have power, we have a voice. Uh, and I think this work really speaks to that. So let's get into it. How did we get here? We had a major win. Tell us how did we get here and what does the ruling, the voting rights ruling really mean for Louisiana? Good afternoon. Um, so no, this this ruling is really important, and so um, so it's actually a first step. It's you know we still have to go to trial in the Fifth Circuit, um, but what it what it means though, absolutely and and a fact, is that the Supreme Court reaffirmed Section Two of the Voting Rights Act, and currently Louisiana does not have one map one enacted map, one voted on map by this legislative body that actually meets the requirements of Section 2, with the exception of PSC, the Public Service Commission, but there's some questions there too. <laughs> and so what this means is, is that we, have to, we get to have our day in court, but most importantly that the Supreme Court refused to hear Louisiana's case and understood and agreed that it was very much so in alignment with Alabama's case, we, had, we actually have more black, you know, African-American population at 33%. And it also, we had a pristine record. And when we talk about the record, you know, we knew from the beginning we'd have to go to court. And so what is so exciting to me is that for redistricting, we had historic, unprecedented participation in the redistricting process. Thousands of Louisianans came out to an uh, eight-stop road show that was held by the legislative body. And then we had over 300 people join us at the legislature on the opening of redistricting session followed by so many of our friends and partners bringing folks from communities all over the state who continuously said they wanted a fair, they wanted fair and equitable maps and that they wanted a second congressional district because we have six congressional house seats. We've got a third of the population that's African-American and a third of six is two all day. <laughs> that's a good thing about math every day. And so what was so powerful about Monday was that so much of this story up until Monday had been about the courts the legislature and the governor and all these other folks that, that have power, certainly. But this was actually about the people. So Monday was about people power. Be and, and it was interesting, too, because none of the reporters called me on the, on the day that they released the Alabama verdict, but they called me 
on Monday because it was about people power. It was about the fact that the people won, that the Supreme Court did not hear this case, that at the end of the day, the Fifth Circuit's gonna hear this. And here's what's also really wonderful, is that the citizens of this state asked for this, they fought for this, and now we are well on our way to winning this. And the Fifth Circuit has already agreed with us several times before we even got the case stayed by the Supreme Court. And so we are very optimistic and excited that we are gonna realize this additional black district. And, you know, and the important work, and we'll talk some more about getting, you know, people getting active, is now that we have to vote and we have to own these districts. They actually, we need to, as black voters, be able to elect candidates of choice. And there is a lot of rhetoric out there that we may not be able to do that. And I have told all of them that, well, me and my friends are gonna make sure <laughs> that we realize two minority majority districts. And so, um, but this is a big win for the people of Louisiana and they really did that hard work. Um, and now we wanna, you know, like, so this part is done, but they have, we have to now remind folks that we get a little break and then we're gonna have to actually turn out to vote. Thank you, Ashley. So Ashley lifted up the people power. It's really about activating the power of the people. So can't, can you tell us, Judy, a little bit more about how do we activate that power? Thank you, Deidre. Hello, everyone. I'm really, really happy to be here today because this is the most important conversation that we can have and we must have. We have to focus on how each of us can max out every possible action. The good news is that the actions are not difficult. The actions are simple, but we have to activate. So to your question about how we activate, it, it's very simple. We have to pay attention and we have to realize that our vote matters. Isn't that simple? Very simple, very straightforward. It actually does make a difference. And now we know what that means. And so you have organizations like the Urban League of Louisiana, like the Power Coalition, many other partner organizations who work on this every single day, engage with community to make sure that they understand what the appropriate actions are how they can participate, how they can engage their families, their communities, their social organizations to participate. Somehow, somewhere along the way, we bought into the rhetoric that our vote doesn't matter. We actually believe that. And then we acted on that. So we have to change that. We have to now understand. If we don't understand it now, I don't know what more it's going to take. Our votes do matter. We must use them. We must exercise them. And I know we're going to get to this a little bit later, uh, but Mark Morial, the president of the National Urban League said, I hope people now really understand that voting for the president really makes a difference. It really matters. Now we really understand how that makes a difference. And so, we have to activate by paying attention when information comes along, saying yes to those invitations when the Power Coalition and the Urban League of Louisiana hold a community meeting and invite you to come so that we can share information with you about how to learn about who is running for office and how to learn about what their platforms are and how to think about what issues matter to you. We are the experts, we know what matters to us, what makes a difference in our communities. And so that activation piece, D, is so critically important. Now more than ever before, we have to remember that we are the owners of our destiny, but it can be taken away if we don't pay attention and if we don't act. And can I say one more thing? We have to demystify this whole idea of policy and policy making as Ashley talks about what's happening in the, the court system. If you listen to what she says, it's really, really simple and easy to understand. We have to pay attention and we have to stay abreast of and on top of this information that is coming to our attention. We have to listen to organizations that are helping us and guiding us to know how to move and when to move 
And the activations are not difficult. They're not complex and they don't take that much of our time. But we have to pay attention. We have to remember that we are the policy makers. We are our own policy makers for our community. And I think that is, that puts us on the road to activating and not thinking of it as something that is something that we only do once maybe when there's a presidential candidate that we love, that we feel particularly akin to, but every single time we are, we have something on the ballot every single time and we have to pay attention to that. Okay, so one of the reasons I'm really excited about this panel is these are women who make the real things happen. So we're part of when we talk about what Judy just mentioned, and people not feeling connected. It's that they need to see themselves in the issue. How is this policy, how is voting gonna make a real difference in my life and shifting that narrative? And Ashley has been doing that work, literally activating voters around, around the state. And so can you tell us a little bit about, like not just the, uh, the work that you're doing to activate voters, but also how do people start to get more proximate to the issues? How do they better understand what's on the ballot? How, what should I be paying attention to? How do they get access to good information? Absolutely. Um, you know, the Power Coalition is really dedicated to the education of voters. We try to make it as easy as possible. And whether it's a ballot that tells you everyone that's on the ballot in your community, tells you what every constitutional amendment means and what it means if you vote yes and what it means if you vote no, because they make sure that that language is very complicated. Or if there are other things like millages and other kinds of tax things that'll be on the ballot, we explain all of that. All of it's available on our website. We work with different communities around the state to also provide ballots because it's a lot of, the ballots look different in almost every parish in the state, depending on what's happening. And so, you know, and so we make sure that for the things that are constant, yes, but the things that we need to explain what it means. Also too, what power does the governor have? What power does the, the attorney general have? What does the lieutenant governor do, right? And so helping people connect the dots about why these things matter. And why it's important is, you know, I remind people like voting is a social determinant of health. And if you have, if you question that, think about COVID. Elected leaders decided every single thing about whether we were safe at, a, at, a, at our jobs, whether our children were safe at school, they're still deciding whether our children are safe at school. Every single thing that we did an elected official decided that. And we need to make sure that when they're making those decisions that they are it working in our best interest and not in the best interest of, you know, whatever it is that they're worried about or whoever's applying the most pressure. And so another way that you can get involved, and Judy spoke to this, we have listening sessions all over the state. And so in addition to these ballots and all of these different, you know, different pieces of information, we hold candidate forums. Um, we hold issue forms where we're helping people understand constitutional amendments and other things on the ballot. And then also, too, we listen, right? And so understanding, like, what are those issues that are important to community? So the community feels not only, like, we're, we're, gonna, we're here and we've been here. And so building that trust, engaging and in, investing in leadership at the local level. And so we work with com uh, trusted community leaders all over the state. Um, we last year gave away about a million dollars to community-based organizations, churches, partners all across the state of Louisiana to make sure that they engage in elections. And we will do even more than that this year because we have statewide elections this year and everything will be on the ballot the from the governor all the way down to your house and your Senate seat. And we are at a critical moment. And again, you know, I'm going to state some facts. So it may sound a little political, but it's just facts. Um, you know, we are 100, we're almost 100 days away from the election. Um, and the fact is, is that, you know, we had the kind of leadership this past legislative session that, you know, like there were, there were super majorities that did not allow some of the really important legislation that people in this state really wanted. And so, you know, and so we have an opportunity to change that. We have an opportunity to go and vote for the people that are going to do the work of the people and and that we actually do have that chance. We're also.